According to the bookies, Argentina second favourites, and this will be our focus as you take a look at some of the uh, newspapers back in Argentina as they, of course, knock the Netherlands out on a penalties. For more on this, let's welcome in, shall we? Shaka Hislop is with us, and the one, the only, Pablo Zabaleta hey, hey. as well. Pablo, there's so much I want to talk to you about. I want to start with your reaction when the Dutch pulled off that free kick to make it 2-2 with the last kick of the game. What yeah. were you like? I, I, I couldn't believe it, Dan. I mean, uh, I was at the stadium, uh, I was doing the game, and uh, I swear to God, I just, uh, I thought, why would you do a foul just, you know, very close to our goal, just outside of the 18 yard uh, box. We don't need to do that, but, uh, you know, it was just last shot for uh, Netherlands and they did incredible goal. I mean, uh, well done for the player because you have you need a, a very cold mind to do this, uh, you know, at that moment. Uh, I, but believe me, I couldn't believe it. I thought, wow, that's going to be really hard now in extra time because uh, Netherlands were playing well in the last 10 minutes, just putting ball into the area, into the, you know, crosses, and we were struggling to defend that play and, and long ball from Netherlands. So... But at the end, we uh, we managed to <laughs> to play well and and, and to win on, on penalties. So uh, you know that was uh, really good uh, at the end of the day. It was you know when you win after like after uh, that result of two two in the last minutes. The celebration is a lot better. Yeah, yeah, but goodness me, what an emotional roller coaster you're on. Stevie, it's the first time you've been here since that yeah. happened. It was so momentous that even Craig admitted that he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, it was exciting, though. I mean, I can't, I enjoyed the game, but I wouldn't say it was exciting. Yes. And I thought Argentina absolutely, when they went 2 0 up, number one. Did you take the dog out at that stage? I did. <laughs> 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 2 0. Two -nil for the I was like, it's 2 0. They've absolutely, yeah. no question, they deserve to be 2 0 up. Right. And I couldn't see it. How was, how's Holland going to get a goal? Right. There's no way they were going to get a goal. But of course, good old fashioned, get a couple of big guys up front. Um, yeah, smart play on the, on the free kick, but just. Incredible. And then I walked back in the house and it was extra time. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> Top notch analysis as always for me. <laughs> well, then to, well, then I had to make sure I didn't get the result, so I had to go to the tape right. and then watch it from there. So I see. I still felt all the excitement and everything. Oh, oh, there you oh. go. <laughs> Your technology, so was it VCR? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wind it back. Uh, Pablo, what's the feeling now? The, can, can you go all the way, I suppose, is the inevitable question? Well, of course, uh, we keep that momentum going, um, going into the semi-final in, uh, with confidence. Uh, when, when you win a game like that on penalties with all the motion and the tension, uh, obviously, is, is, is huge for, for the whole group, for the team. Uh, we have seen... Uh, an angry Messi in in, in, mm. in that game as well. Uh, some of the players uh, playing with huge personality as well. It was not an easy game, but of course going into the semi-final against Croatia, nice. it won't be easy, another tough game. But of course, uh, I think the, the the mentality is there for Argentina. I mean, uh, we we look like a strong team. Uh, uh, you know, Messi playing well, and uh, and of course. Uh, we are really, uh, really excited about that moment. But, uh, you know, calm down, still two more games to go. Of course, uh, we want to be in the final, but we have a, a big, big game coming up now. Shaka, was it you that was telling me that um, Argentina is just like watching Atletico Madrid, but with Messi? <laughs> no, that was not me, Dan. <laughs> you can put a lot on me, but not that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to respond to that. I really don't. They're not very... I don't know. We're well, not dynamic. Mm. No. Until he gets it. Yes. And it's almost like a switch mm -hmm. because everybody else starts moving when he gets it. Right. So why can't they do it before he gets it? It doesn't, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it, it just tells you that it's, it's all about him. You know, unless he's involved in it, it seems like they're just happy to not make any mistakes until he gets it and then bosh. Everything starts opening up. When he goes through him, I used the term a couple of days ago, he gives the team clarity. 
And, and that's exactly what happens to Argentina. The ball goes to Messi. He's under pressure. He now then finds a pass or an angle that then creates everything else for everybody else and opens up the attack for Argentina. But this shouldn't be a surprise. This is how they won Copa America against Brazil, that it was tense, it was hard fought, it was stressful at times, that they had to go through Colombia and penalty kicks, that they had to be able to find a way to, to find just, quite, just small moments, small sequences where Lionel Messi has that, that different uh, level of talent than everybody else and then opens up everything else for Argentina. This wasn't a team that was going to come into this World Cup and was going to go on a back and forth with everybody else. They were not going to go in a, you know what, we'll attack you, you attack us sort of thing. No, it was going to be physical. And that's part of the reason as to why they had been successful in that there is balance to this group. They're tough to beat through the midfield. There is a standard of play that they have set defensively that now gives Lionel Messi and everybody else in that final third a platform from where they can create. But it still goes through Messi, and it's still all about Messi. I, th I think you'd have to be a little worried, though. For, this, for the reason I went for a walk with a dog at 2-0, all the things that we're talking about, it's a team and it's strong and it's been solid defensively and this and that, for that team to lose a two-goal lead in such a huge game, if I'm Croatia, I'm delighted. I know that there's a weakness there. Pablo, uh, the celebrations, of course, after the victory were quite something. Um, some have said that Argentina lacked class in the way that they celebrated in the Dutch faces when that last penalty went in. <laughs> uh, come on. Uh, Dan, uh, listen, Bangal just kept talking uh, the day before the game about Messi, that in 2014 he didn't touch the ball, that when Argentina doesn't have the ball, he's like playing with 10 men. Uh, then uh, some of the Netherlands players just bothering every single Argentina players when they went to take the penalties. Uh, the goalkeeper talking to Messi and penalties as well, provoking. I know that. And then what? There is only Argentina lack of respect. No, come on. It's just a, a, it's just a World Cup game with a lot of tension. And both teams been a bit of, uh, you know, fighting in the game, which is something that you will expect in, uh, in a quarterfinal of the World Cup. And then Argentina won. And OK, that, that picture is for some people could be like a lack of, uh, a res uh, you know, respect uh, to the opponent. Okay, we can learn, we can be better than that, but at the, end of the, at the end of the day, we need to understand there was a lot of tension between players from both sides in the game. So uh, we, we don't need to say anything uh, more about this situation. You know? Shaka, we, I'd like you to say more about this situation, please. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to, to digest everything that Pablo just said because I, I'm looking in from the outside um, and, and it just seemed really odd to me as well how this game kind of took on a, a life of its own that, that I, I truly didn't didn't expect. The game seemed to be playing out as, as, as most quarterfinals do. He did competition, given everything at stake, you understand that. And then Paredes did what he did and all of a sudden things just seemed to things just seem to switch for, for both teams. And then to the point, and, and we, we talk about Lionel Messi and his role within this team and how everybody else sees his role within this team as well. At two up, Argentina are absolutely cruising. And the Dutch have to do something to, to shift momentum somewhat. And they, they decided to, to take it on in, in a physical way. The game become, became a lot more emotional um, and a, a lot more of a battle. And, and it worked for them because it got them, it got them back into, into the game. And while I am no body language expert, at 2-2, inevitably, the camera cuts to Lionel Messi. And he always seems to cut this deflated figure when things aren't going wonderfully well. It, the, the, the difference in how he looked for a 2-0 and a 2-2 was striking. But, but to that point, that's when I wanted to see angry Messi, let, let's call it. The Messi that emerged after the game. The, the player that would rally his troops and try to regain the kind of um, emotional advantage um, in, 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 in the contest. And, and while Argentina were, were again better, better than the Dutch through, through all of extra time, 
I, I think that was more to do with the Dutch than Dutch kind of regressing than Argentina stepping their game up. And th Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.